Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura and if you're new here, you can subscribe down below and also click the notification bell so you get notified every time I have a new upload. Today, I wanna to take some time to discuss some tips on how you can see that your remote internship, stand out, and also even get a return offer as well. In general, I know it's really important for all of us to figure out how we can make the most impact out of our remote internship, and also how we can make a good impression to the people around us and the people that we're working with on our teams. So I wanna split this video up into three parts. The first is settling in, second is communication and working with your team slash manager, and third is standing out. Last, at the end, also save some time to talk about any hiccups that you may encounter during your internship and how you can help combat them to make the most of your internship still. So let's get started. So first is onboarding slash setting up. Even in person, the first week or the first day on the job is always super, super awkward because you don't know everyone and you're unfamiliar with how the team operates, what the personalities are like, and all I can say is don't worry. You'll have plenty of time to meet with the people on your team, get set up, and also figure out how you can best communicate and mesh with the rest of your team. When we're working from home, I'd highly recommend you work to set up your equipment how you like, move your desk around, create a workspace. Really just work to create an environment that you can find yourself being productive in and also minimize any distractions that may come in or out of your room or working space. Just a reminder that you'll be working here for 40 hours a week for the next eight to 12 weeks. If you already had a current desk set up, Maybe it might be time for a new change, spring cleaning, summer clean out. Woohoo! Big summer blowout! And just help refresh your space a little bit. Of course, if you absolutely have no other room, then by all means, keep a current setup. But I would encourage you, if you do have space, to think about how you can reorganize your room and just bring in some new life. You might also want to work to set up any software you need. For example, your team may have a very specific way of formatting code and they have a linter installed that you also need to install. I know that's not necessarily software, but it is the best example I can think of in this situation. Now let's talk about meeting the team and other interns that you may be working with. You really want to focus on meeting your team, your managers, your mentor, and any other fellow interns that may be on your team. These are kind of the people that you can rely on and also look forward to chatting up later down the road if you're in need of assistance or just want to reach out to your professional network. Hopefully your mentor and manager have reached out before day one, but if they haven't reached out day one, then this is also the perfect time to just message them. You may not know exactly who your mentor is because that's probably assigned by your manager, but at the very least, you should have an idea of who your manager is and feel free to just reach out and send them an email. So if you still have absolutely no clue who your point of contact is, then I would encourage you to message anyone who may have reached out to you prior to the internship and just ask if they can provide you with a point of contact. Within the first week, this is also the perfect time to meet the rest of your team. If you're working on an intern project, the higher likelihood is that you're usually siloed, so not directly working on a project with the rest of the team. However, I think it's still really important to work with the rest of the team, or at least get to know them in some capacity, so you can say hi and at least start to create connections with them. It also really helps to break the ice, so the next time you come running to them asking about how to unbreak production, it's not as awkward. It's also super easy to just reach out and basically you set up a one-on-one -on -one with anyone as long as you pull the intern card where you just explain, hey, I'm a new intern at so-and-so company and I'd love to reach out and just have a quick chat and discuss X, Y, or Z. You can do this either through email or a direct message on whatever messaging platform your company uses. Email is usually more formal, so I would stick to the side of that if you don't have any direct introductions or connections to this person. And I would also highly recommend at least setting up a temporary agenda. So that's the part about I'd love to discuss X, Y, or Z with you. Even if you don't follow this agenda word for word, it does help at least to set up expectations and know what that person can provide for you moving forward. If your company does have some Slack or Teams-like platform for global company communications, then hopefully there are some intern platforms on there that you can use to connect with other interns and also just chat with them. I would also encourage you to reach out to these other interns that you may not directly work with just to get an idea of how your company functions and operates as well as the kind of interesting work that other interns are because of course the company works in tons of different product areas, not just the team that you're interning on. Now we'll be talking about actual tasks you can be doing during your settle in process. So you'll always have onboarding tasks in that first week, such as required training to go through, forms to sign, documents to look through, and these will also usually take at least a day or two for you to get permissions slash access to. So again, just sit tight and kind of cross your fingers and wait. Don't be stressed and push yourself to immediately try to figure out a task to complete in that first week. You don't need to get a head start on whatever project you're being assigned and literally no one is expecting anything from you week one. If you really do want to be a superstar, then I'd recommend learning the tech framework, style guidelines, 
set up Outlook rules for your inbox or whatever inbox you're using for work and just be a friendly person and say hi and reach out to people. You probably won't even have access to a lot of systems and resources that you need before the end of week one. So again, it's really just the patience game and use week one as much as you can to just settle in. After all, this is pretty much your true adjustment week and you should use it accordingly. Second, let's talk about communication. Your primary sources to communicate with are going to be your manager who is in charge of basically how well you perform. If you do have one, a mentor who is there to just kind of be your light in the dark, answer any questions you have, kind of hold your hand through the whole internship process and introduce you to people across the company. Let's quickly talk about what the point of communication is though. The point of communication is so you can update stakeholders and other members of your team of what's going on in your intern project. Clarify any questions you may have and also generally show that you're aware enough to communicate in the first place and just put together presentations, slideshows, anything to showcase your work a little bit. Especially when we're working in a remote environment, it's better to over communicate than under communicate. If you're struggling, then please, by all means, go talk to your mentor and see if there are any resources or people that you can talk to to help unblock you. If there's something that you think your manager can better help you with or better communicate, then straight up tell them that. Without having these face-to-face -face interactions, it could be really difficult to gauge how well you're doing as an intern. So if you ever have any doubts, just please reach out to these people first. With your manager, they're not just human beings to help evaluate you. They're literally there to help you grow and learn, or at least that's what good managers are intended to do. I would recommend that you set up concrete goals with the manager at the beginning and frequently check in with them about how you're doing. For more information, I'll link my video about finding success at your new internship or new grad job because I outline more of this in detail over there. It'll also set you up for good reflection at the end of your internship and provides you with some guide on what you can do in your free time if you're blocked, waiting for a model to deploy, waiting for your PR to get approved, etc. As an intern, you also have a unique power in magically being able to talk to people you really shouldn't have access to talk to. Like I mentioned earlier, the intern card is something that is super, super powerful, and a lot of people want to help out students and cater to their needs. Because of course, as a student, this is your first foray into industry and the long road of figuring out what to do with your career ahead of you. So out of the goodwill and spirit of most people, they'll see you as an intern and be excited to chat with you and see what you're doing. Also, please attend company intern events, at least from time to time. You deserve to have fun and relax from your work, and a reminder that your internship doesn't mean you have to be constantly working 40 hours a week. By work, I mean, obviously you should be present and there for those 40 hours, but by constantly working, I mean you shouldn't be heads down just sitting at your table and kicking yourself for not knowing how to fix this bug in your C-sharp code. Last, I wanna focus on how you can stand out as a remote intern. Communication is kind of the biggest key on how you can stand out. It really shows that you're resourceful, attentive, and aware and honest about what's going on with your project and being proactive about seeking out feedback or at least soliciting feedback from certain people. Any opportunity to showcase your work is also gonna be a huge factor in helping you stand out. If you aren't working directly with your team, then ask your manager if you can set up some sort of presentation or meeting at the end of your internship with the rest of your team. If you're working in a larger company, then chances are that there are some organization-wide intern project fairs or even a whole company-wide intern project fair. Take these chances to highlight your work, talk to people across the company, and again, just practice pitching yourself and the incredible work that you've done over the summer. Even if you aren't able to reach the whole company, even presenting to your team is a huge step in and of itself. I remember feeling pretty nervous every time I had to present to my team, but as an intern, they understand your limits and also understand that you've literally just onboarded, done your project, and you're also about to leave in the span of just a short eight to 12 weeks. You're obviously not gonna be as productive as a full-time employee, and you're also probably not gonna know as much as a full-time employee, and that's totally okay. I also wanna to touch on the fact that not completing your project does not mean that you failed any way, shape, or form. Sometimes projects are just overscoped for interns, and that there's a lot more work that needs to be done than initially expected. And the opposite can also be true. Your project can be underscoped and you'll end up finding some free time to work on other projects at the end of your internship. Again, you're not gonna get disqualified from a return offer if either of these cases happen to you. Of course, if you finish your project early, then that just showcases that you're a great worker and that you do a great job of doing what you do. Also, highlighting the communication point, standing out isn't solely project focused. There are other ways to stand out and you certainly should also be looking at other ways to stand out. This can include thinking back to goals you set up with your manager, learning new things, meeting new people, and just expressing interest in the things that are happening around you, not tunnel visioning on your own work or project. Also, attending just those casual meetings with your team can help your name stand out. 
the more that you just interact with people, the more they get to talk about your character, your altruism, the goodness in your heart, stuff like that. Okay, so what if you're actually having a crappy internship and things just really aren't going your way? Let's tackle some bugs in the road that you might encounter. One, your manager doesn't really care about you or the work that you're doing. If this is your case, then maybe your manager didn't intend on having an intern for the summer, or they are just sorely behind on the work that they have to do for whatever reason. To remedy this, I would recommend seeking out other people in the company that can support you or that you can talk to. Some common people include your mentor, who can also help be an advocate for you and seek out other resources or just people that you can talk to, or your manager's manager. Your manager's manager, or called your skip, may be helpful and they can talk to your manager and just kind of help assess what's going on. And in some rare cases, maybe your skip can help reassign you to a different team or just help support you in place of your manager. Two, you don't like your project and you just are finding a hard time working on it. If this is the case, then I'd recommend just talking to your manager and being open and honest, especially if it is early on. If you do have the opportunity to switch off to a different project, then congrats, you've kind of solved your problem here. If this is towards the later stages of your internship, then you may kind of be SOL, but I would recommend just pushing through it and trying to find the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe there are some other core projects that your team works on and you just kind of got the short end of the stick with your intern project and that's okay. However, if you do find yourself just feeling bored with the general work that your team does, then I encourage you to ask your manager if there are any other teams you can reach out to and see if they would be willing to have a return intern or a return new grad coming back to their team. Three, what if you don't like your team? This kind of goes hand in hand with the previous question of not liking your project. I would reach out to your manager and mentor, and if your company has an internal corporate search, then go through that corporate search to find if there are any teams or managers you can talk to that may be interested in supporting a new intern or a new grad. Worst case is you can come back to your team, stick around for a couple years, and then transfer internally. Four, you are lacking productivity, you're feeling really sick, some of the disaster occurs, what do I do? So in this situation, again, you'll notice that my answer is I'll point to talk to your manager, but really talk to your manager and just say, I'm feeling X, Y, or Z. They will definitely work with you to create a plan and also see if there are any days off that you can get if you are sick or feeling under the weather. I know it can feel kind of scary to talk to your manager and say, hey, I'm not feeling very productive. So I probably wouldn't recommend doing that as your first step, but I would reach out to your mentor or your buddy if you have one and just seeing if they can help talk you through your lack of productivity or motivation and solving this at the small scale. If that doesn't work, then maybe it might need to escalate to a bigger problem. But in the short term, I think it's perfectly normal to have some weeks where you're less productive and some weeks where you're more productive. So unless you're 100% absolutely stuck and have no idea how to get out, I would just wait it out and see if you can kind of bounce back. Five, what if you feel super burnt out and just hate working remotely? Story of a lot of people's life. Getting tired now though, to me. I, in the beginning, I was like, okay, it's cool, ha. Huh? If you're experiencing burnout from your internship, this is also perfectly normal because jumping from student to internship back to student can be a very exhausting process. And especially remote, you really don't have too much opportunity to explore the city and hang out with a lot of friends. To avoid burnout, I would highly recommend taking frequent breaks and looking at some ways to help manage your time that works best for you. If you enjoy working in blocked off times, then working with a Pomodoro timer may be a good plan for you. If you're really feeling burnt out mentally, your brain capacity is at an all-time low, and you just need to get away from work, then I would highly recommend partaking in some form of exercise or activity. I just can't catch a break. <laughs> I would highly recommend going for a longer walk outside just to refresh yourself. If you're also stuck on how to solve a problem, then again, taking a break and just stepping away from the problem can actually help refresh your brain and help you come up with ways to solve that problem better. I hope all of you are really excited for your upcoming internship, even if it isn't going to be how you anticipated. I know that working from home during a pandemic is really rough and not being able to see friends or family can also take a toll. Just remember that you are definitely worth it and you can do whatever you set your mind to. This company hired you for a reason, so don't feel like you're an imposter or feel like you don't belong. As long as you really have your communication down pat, then I promise you, you'll be okay. You'll still definitely learn tons of the new company get to meet new people, and fingers crossed, hopefully get a return offer. Let me know if you have any more questions that you'd like me to cover. These tips aren't applicable only for remote internships, but it serves as a helpful reminder of what your priorities should be, especially working remotely. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday for a brand new video. Bye. Hey, what you talking about?